fly this week is going to follow suit with some others that I've been doing, mostly wet flies. This is the Mallard and Clorette. This was requested by a longtime follower of the Dressed Irons channel. And it's an interesting fly, uh, basic wet fly pattern in terms of the components to it and how it's put together. It does use a seals fur dubbing, which you can't get, or at least it's difficult to get real seals fur. So I'm using a synthetic and it is a, a bronze mallard wing. I'm not going to tie this in in a traditional bronze mallard in terms of creating a couple slips, but rather I will um, cut some barbs off of a feather and kind of roll that flash, fold that together into a wing, which just makes a nice, quick fishing fly. So that's the mallard and claret. I'll go ahead and get started. So I'll start the mallard and claret by placing my hook on the vise. This is a Mustad 3399 number 8. Go ahead and debarb the hook. I'm going to attach my thread. I'm using a Uni 8 aught in black. Because it's a dubbed body and the, the claret is actually a dark claret, it's um, I don't have to worry about having a light thread base. Uh, I don't have to worry about the dark black thread here darkening up the body. So I'll attach that about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. I'll run that down the length of the hook to about the point of the hook. I like to get touching turns as best I can simply because it, it just gives you more uh, a better foundation for the body to grip. But uh, if the if the wraps aren't 100% next to each other, that's fine. Now the tail on the mallard and claret is golden pheasant tippet. Going to select a feather, peel away the short, fluffy fibers. Then I'm going to clip out somewhere. I like it a little bit fuller, so I'm going to clip out somewhere between I'll say six and ten fibers barbs, I should say. I'm going to try, you've got a dull side to these and a brighter side to these. I like to try and roll these up when I can so that the dull side is all on the inside and the brighter colors are all on the outside. I'll measure that about a shank length, a little bit longer, and I'll attach that to the hook where my thread is hanging. Wrapping in a few wraps, advancing my thread down the hook shank. I'll trim away the excess so that that is the length of the body. Now I'll attach my rib. The rib on the Mallard and Claret is a oval gold tinsel. I'm using a Danville size 18. It's pretty small. You could go with, say, a 14 if you want. It's a little bit bigger. I like the 18. It gives it just a hint of gold without uh, being too pronounced. I'll attach that to the hook. Got to be careful with this oval gold tinsel because it is a tinsel that is wrapped around a cord. So if you pull on this too much, the tinsel can come unwrapped off of that cord. And that's why part of the reason I didn't put it underneath the thread and bring it around as I do other tinsels because this, I can't pull this to the left and slide it. It will hang up on that wrap tinsel. That's the rib. Now the body of this is going to be a claret seal fur dubbing. I'm using a product called Real Seal, and I'll have a link um, down in the description for this. It is a synthetic pseudo seal fur. It's not a genuine seal fur. The seal fur was, was favored for a lot of wet flies and, and other 
flies because it has a nice kind of translucent appearance in the water. But I'm not going to actually dub the body on right now because I want to wrap forward binding the tag or the, the other end of that rib as well as that golden pheasant tippet down to the hook shank. This does not have to be in touching turns. You're wanting to just bind that in. It's going to be covered up by the dubbing. The dubbing actually will be very forgiving too. So if you have a little bit of bump of thread in one area or another, it probably will not show up. So with that bound in, I'm going to dub the seal's fur. I actually just wet my uh, finger, a little saliva, just run it on my tongue. That's to give me a little bit of extra grip. This synthetic material, if you just have dry hands, will tend to slide between your fingers instead of twist onto the thread. So I just moisten it just a little bit. You could use a wax if you want to use a wax to aid in this. Put the wax on your finger and then rub it between your finger and your thumb. Don't put it on the thread. Continue making just a sparse, very sparse, thin dubbing noodle, maybe about four or five inches long, whatever you're comfortable with. And we'll start wrapping that forward. When I wrap this, I want to try and keep this a level body. Or if I do have a taper, I have just a gradual taper right towards the front, but not too much. And I'll explain why in just a moment. So I'll start wrapping that in at the back, making certain I'm covering up all my thread wraps and just work my way forward. It does not have to be a thick, bulky body. If you don't have enough, that's fine. Just grab your thread and your dubbing and Add a little bit more. I only want to get up to about an eye length, a little too much there, about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. So I take off a little bit. I want to make certain that I don't, don't go too far forward and I don't want to build up right here. As you'll see in a minute when we tie in our rib, our throat, and then our wing, if I have too much built up right in here, then the wing gets lashed down and instead of being back a little bit more sloped this way it ends up getting pushed up at a broader at a sharper angle I should say. Apply my rib one wrap at the back and then start opening that up. I want five evenly spaced wraps. this is a metal tinsel. I'm using a not as sharp pair of scissors as they're not my real good scissors to trim that so that if the end of the tip of that those scissors get dull it's no big deal. My real nice scissors are still nice and sharp. Sweeping some of those fibers back of that dubbing. I'm just going to clean this up and wrap this down to about an eye length behind the eye of the hook. Now I want to make this body just a little bushier so I'm just going to take a dubbing. This is just a little velcro on a stick, the, the uh, hook part of it. And I'm just going to tease a little bit, not a whole lot. I don't want to make this real bushy. 
But what this will do in the water is it will give that kind of a halo, a translucent halo over the middle of the fly. It just helps it a little bit. And it's going to get, you know, even a little bushier as you are fishing this and catching fish. So for our throat, I'm using some strong schloppen. You could use some rooster saddle hackle if that's what you've got. You want to find one that's going to be have more uh, barbules on the barbs. It's a little webbier, uh, flows a little bit better for the throat. I'll pick out a feather, peel away the fluff. I want to peel enough of that away so that I am getting into the nice long fibers, barbs I should say. Then I'm going to pull some out so that they are perpendicular to the rachis and I'll peel those off. Now I can keep these if I wanted to. I, I would have a little bit thinner throat on that, but I like it a little bit thicker so I'm going to get some from the other side here and then marry those up with the first bunch. The important thing here is that you're getting these, whatever you're comfortable with holding and working with in your right hand, but you're getting the tips of these evened up before you peel those off. Because then all you have to do is just kind of roll and fold those together. You don't want to necessarily roll it into a tight bundle, but fold that together just a little bit. Then I can marry this up with the other batch that I got. Now I have just a little bit thicker throat for my fly. I want the tips of those to be, I like them right around the barb, which is going to be about halfway between the point of the hook and the back of the gap of the hook. And then holding those underneath, I'll use a pinch and loop to pull those up, securing those down to the hook shank, and then trim away the excess. Bring my thread up to the eye, working back a little bit. I'll bind in the butt ends of that schloppen. Carefully, you don't put too many wraps in there, just put in enough that you're getting it bound in the way you want it. There we go. Bringing my thread back to the back end. Now it's ready for my wing. The wing on this is a bronze mallard. That's where you get the name mallard and claret. Bronze mallard is not like your regular mallard flank. These are much bigger feathers. I know you don't see the whole feather in the in the picture there. If I bring it back here, you might be able to see all of it, but it's going to be blurry. But these are much larger feathers. They're often used for uh, spay and de flies. I'm going to peel away some of the fluffy stuff here just to get it out of the way. I don't need it on there. And then on this side, which is where I'm going to be taking the uh, barbs that I'm going to use for the wing, I'm just going to peel the fluff off, but I'm also going to take some of this stuff off. It's a little too soft and too short for what I need, so I'm just going to get it out of the way. Taking for this particular feather, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about uh, here's where our, where our usable barbs end on down to the base here. So I'm about half of it I'm going to take and use for the wing for this. I want to gently stroke these down just a little bit, and this is to try and get the tips more even right here. If they're not 100% even, that's fine. I'll show you what we're going to do to help correct that. Then I'm going to trim these away from the rachis of the feather. And now you'll notice that I have some that are much shorter down here at the bottom than at the top. That's fine. These are also lighter and I don't really want 
those on the outside i like the the darker color on the outside so to make our wing and you can certainly do a more traditional um, type wing with a mallard flank if you want where you're getting a left and a right slip and all of that but for this all i'm going to do is start folding over if i can do this on camera folding over these barbs like this and kind of folding slash rolling this up into a wing. I want to try and keep this um, the diameter that I want for my wing, which is going to be somewhere around the, the, I don't mean diameter, I meant width. It's going to be somewhere around the gap of the hook. Then that way I have those shorter fibers on the inside and the darker ones, longer ones on the outside. Collecting those together, I'll hold those on top of the hook shank. The tips should be about halfway down the tail, just past the bend of the hook. Holding those in place, I'll use a pinch wrap to secure those down, and another few wraps to hold those. Make certain that I have those on top. And I have those in the position that I want. That looks good. Now I'm going to hold those wings and the wing in place again and put in a few more wraps working backwards just to make sure it's nice and secure. And then I can trim off the excess up here. Bringing my thread right behind the eye of the hook, I will start wrapping backwards to collect those cut butt ends and create the head of the fly. Just take your time with this. You always want to make the head from the eye backwards. And you want to try and just cover up all the materials that are there and that's all you're looking for on the head. You're not looking for making something big and bulky and pronounced. You just want to give it a nice taper down to the eye of the hook. Then I'll use a six or seven turn whip finish, kind of put the finishing touches on the head of the fly. Curing that down, I can trim away the excess thread and our mallard and claret is almost finished. Some of those dubbing fibers are a little too long. I like to just trim them back a little bit, understanding that as you're fishing this, you're gonna get more out and that's fine. And you know, this wing isn't gonna look this nice or the throat as you're fishing it. It's all gonna swim and move around and that's what you want it to do. Now I'll go ahead and put a little head cement on both sides of the head. And this is a fly tight head cement. It is much thinner head cement and it is designed to just soak down into those threads and bind all that together very well. On a lot of these wet flies, I like to put some black lacquer on them to polish them up make them look nice and finished. Normally for these videos, I will do that off camera and, and just show the finished product like in the introduction for the video. But I've had a number of people who have asked me about the lacquer that I use as well as how I apply it. Um, and so I just thought I'll take the opportunity today to show you how I do that. My finishing process normally is to put uh, just one one coat of the thinner head cement on there to soak down in there and make that solid. And then I might put a coat of hard as hull on there, which will kind of seal down in between the thread wraps and on top of it. And that gives me a nice foundation for only needing one coat of lacquer on the top of it. But at sometimes I will also just go ahead and put two coats of lacquer on the top of it because of the lacquer when you put it on, and I'm just using a, this is a Wopsy black lacquer. 
um, when you put it on, it will shrink as the lacquer thinner evaporates the solvent it will actually shrink down and after that first coat if you don't have something else underneath it, it you'll see the grooves for the thread wrap so you'll have to put a second coat on it so then you get that nice smooth look to it now in the video here i'm going to put one coat on it but because you're not going to see it dry and everything you won't see that it will look like it's a finished fly after that one coat as I talk about the fly and finish up here. But in reality, after a half an hour, an hour, I would come back and put another coat on it. So to apply the, the lacquer, I simply use a bodkin. Brushes, I find are, uh, most of them are too broad. I have to cut a lot of the brushes out, so I have just a few. I find them too flexible. So I just use a bodkin. If you've got an old needle or something like that, you could use that. And I'm simply going to get about half a drop of lacquer onto that bodkin. I usually like to start on the underside. And I'll use my thumb to brace the bodkin. And I just start to apply that just very, very easy to just the underside a little bit and on my side. And then I will rotate the fly around as I'm applying this some more. Understanding that I am putting on two coats, so this one does not have to be super thick. I just want to cover up all those thread wraps. You'll notice that I, I'm not even really getting half a drop, maybe a quarter of a drop of lacquer on there. And I'm just putting on a little at a time as I rotate the fly around. I find this is, it's a little tedious, but it's I get much better results. It's much smoother. And there again, like I said, knowing that this will shrink down and I'm putting another coat on it. Plus I can get that point like right here, right at the base of the wing. I want that head to go right up to the base of that wing. Sometimes it's hard to get in there with a brush without getting it on the wing. Whereas the very tip of this bodkin, I can very easily get in there and just move that lacquer around just as much as I need it. Let the lacquer flow and let the bodkin kind of assist in that lacquer flowing where it needs to go. end up with just a little bit more right on the bottom there. I might come around one more time, kind of running my bodkin through the middle of that, make certain that it's all smoothed off. That first coat dries actually fairly quick. But see, it will kind of self-level itself, and that's what I mean when it actually looks like the fly is done right now. So that's how I apply the lacquer, and that is the Mallard and Claret. It's a fun fly to do. If you don't have the seal's fur on this, but you've got, say, a life cycle or a, oh, I don't know, even a, a fine dubbing or something, um, and uh, in a Claret color, then you could use that just as easy if you want to do this. Again, the seal's fur was favored because it had kind of a translucent look to it. So there you have the Mallard and Claret. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me at Device today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help Dressed Irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly tying. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong.